morning and welcome everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, before we come together in our Thanksgiving celebrations today, I do have a couple of announcements to share with you. Uh, the first is, uh, it is with great joy that I'm able to announce that uh, our seminarian, Jamie Baxter, yesterday in a beautiful ceremony at St. Bartholomew Church in Regent Park, Toronto, uh, married the love of his life, uh, Kathy Lewis, and they are now Mr. and Mrs. Baxter. So let's give them a, I, they might be able to hear some of Okay. Happy and, and, and uh, Jamie, blessings from all your friends here at St. George's. May you have a wonderful adventure together, and we can't wait to see you again and celebrate in person. Congratulations. Uh, also today, the, these beautiful flowers that we have here on the altar are given to the glory of God in loving memory of parents Earl and Betty Whiteside and nephew Jason Whiteside, given by Bruce, Donna, Dale, and Tracy Whiteside. The sanctuary lamp uh, in our church burns to the glory of God, uh, given by Dorothy Russell and her family, as they remember her husband Bruce and son Craig. I would invite you to remember in your prayers this week these members of our St. George's family uh, as we pray for David and Margaret, for Kent and Judy, for Howard and Ruth, for Anne Marie, for Betty Lou, and for Jan and Jeffrey. Today's Holy Eucharist is going to be offered in thanksgiving for the life of David Beard. David passed away yesterday, uh, around 3.30. Uh, it was a, a, a little ordinary miracles in our lives when God opens the door to just give you the perfect opportunity. Uh, Elaine was able to call me on Friday and let me know that, uh, that David was, was beginning to fade. And I was able to be with Elaine and David uh, yesterday uh, to minister last rites. Uh, David was able to be awake with his eyes open and holding our hands, and afterwards he passed very peacefully. Uh, we give thanks to God always. David had a beautiful life, and he will be muchly missed here by his family of St. George's. So please uh, pray for Elaine and family. Uh, pray especially for Susan and, uh, and perhaps her family, but Susan is David and Elaine's daughter who's in the States, who will be trying to relocate here to be with, with family this time. Uh, while uh, Thanksgiving may be a little bit more difficult for, for their family, we give thanks for God for the, pre uh, for the presence of God in David's life right up to the very end and for such a peaceful passing. So please hold the family in prayers. Let's have a moment of silence before we come together for our Harvest Thanksgiving celebrations. And I hope that the words to this service are very familiar to you as we return to our Eucharistic prayers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. As we come together in this time of Harvest Thanksgiving worship, let us be mindful of our fears, of our worries, of all those things that are burdening us in our lives. And it's in this moment where we can be mindful of those things and ask God to help us with them and to take our worries from our shoulders. Let us take a step closer to God as we pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hymn number 415, All Things Bright and Beautiful.
Let us pray. Creator of the fruitful earth, you made us stewards of all things. Give us grateful hearts for all of your goodness and steadfast wills to use your bounty well, that the whole human family, today and in generations to come, may with us give thanks for the riches of your creation. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now for the proclamation of God's word. reading from the book of Deuteronomy, from chapter 26, verses 1 to 11. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it, and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you. And you shall put it in a basket, and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at the time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Armenian was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien. Few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we, tr- we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is number 259, For the Fruit of All Creation.
invite you to please join with me in standing for the proclamation of the gospel. The Lord be with you. And also with you. This is the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, you, Lord Jesus Christ. When the crowd found Jesus on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. And then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give to us, so that we may see it and believe in you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it was written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I invite you to be seated. sacrificial nature of God's love, of how we might come to better know God's love for us and the dependency that we have on God in our times of need. The parable goes like this. It was a cold, hard, and miserable winter night along the outskirts of an Allied Forces encampment in Eastern Europe during the Great War. Rations were low, spirits were even lower. As the soldiers took turns between sleeping in the muddy ditches and making the rounds of the camp perimeter in the darkness and the bitter cold. Before the two young soldiers made to stretch their tired legs for their turn at walking the border, they looked over the remains of the food that they had for the next few days. Between them, 
They had a couple flasks of water, a box of cigarettes, one very precious flask of whiskey, a piece of hardened cheese, and two stale loaves of bread. And these they divvied up between them. Not much, but it was better than nothing. And grabbing their battered rifles, they stamped their feet, they rubbed their cold hands, and they journeyed out into the darkness. The Allied camp was hidden in the middle of a forest and surrounded by abandoned farms. The inhabitants had long since been driven out, and all of the crops had been picked clean. For over an hour, the two soldiers walked side by side in silence. Even if there was something to talk about, it would have been foolishness to give away their positions so close to enemy lines. The night was complete silence, so much so that both soldiers jumped when they heard the breaking of a branch underneath the boughs of the cedar bush. Their rifles wheeled around to point at the bush. Someone was obviously hiding there. As the first soldier went to stick his bayonet in the cedar bush, a woman stepped out into the road. A look of pure panic crossed her face, tears streaming down, as she fell to her knees in front of the soldiers and said in broken English, Please, the children. The cedar bush moved again as two ragged children ran to their mother's arms, a sickly girl and a scrawny boy. Again, the mother begged, please, the children. The first soldier raised his rifle towards the cowering mother. In her hand, he caught a glimpse of something shining like steel. Did she have a knife? Hands in the air, he screamed at her. The children started to cry as the mother opened her hands. Doubt fell a rosary with the figure of Jesus Christ dangling on the cross. Jesus God, Jesus God, the woman prayed. Feelings of pity bubbled up inside the second soldier. Looking at this family of three shivering in the cold reminded him of his own family. So the soldier reached into his jacket and he slowly pulled out one of the steel loaves of bread that he kept there. He broke off one third of the loaf and he handed it to the mother before him. The mother took the bread and without a moment's hesitation broke it into two and gave both pieces away to her starving children. And in an instant the bread had disappeared. The soldier was disturbed that the mother hadn't taken any of the bread to eat for herself. So after a moment's thought, he reached back in and he took another third of his remaining loaf to give the starving mother. He was amazed when again, without a moment's hesitation, the mother broke the bread into two and gave away both pieces to her children, taking nothing for herself. He stared at her in disbelief. In the midst of the violence and the greed and the senseless death and destruction, this was the first act of love that he'd experienced in such a long time. Why? He asked, not knowing if the mother could understand him. But the look on his face was all that she needed to respond. My children, she said. I love my children. Now most people can relate to the sacrificial love of a mother caring for her children. Why is it that when our attention is focused on understanding God's love for us, the concept becomes abstract and perhaps a little less meaningful? I wonder as we look at Thanksgiving this year, I wonder how many people are actually feeling thankful to God. Thankful for what, some might say, in this year, as 2020 seems to be a monumental blight of misfortune and hardship for our lives. Throughout the past eight months that has seen a plague of disease stricken the entire world, causing over 36 million people to be infected, with over a million people perishing already. Within this time of employment anxiety and insecurity for so many, many families have found themselves divided under travel restrictions and where we've seen the ripple effects of poverty causing a measurable hardship for so many in our country and even touching home in our prosperous community of the Blue Mountains. Throughout this miserable 2020 year, I feel compelled, perhaps more than any other year prior, 
to give thanks to God. Because despite all that the pandemic has thrown at us, despite our anxieties, our fears, and our shortcomings, God's love for us remains unchanged. It remains constant. For many, this pandemic has been a renewed summons to faith in God, a renewed reason to celebrate the relationship of Jesus Christ that he's claimed in us, and to live out our lives as a testament to how faithful God has been to us. In our gospel, Jesus reminds us of our dependence on God for our food, for our safety, for any wealth that could ever buy us cars or homes or fattened turkeys. We have these gifts because God has given them to us, Jesus says. And sometimes the image of God that we hold in our minds is of some heavenly bank account that just keeps giving and giving without end. And sometimes because of this, we can take our blessings for granted. We might even come to think that we've earned all of this ourselves. But in the same way that the mother in our story gives away all that she has to her two children, so Jesus, God himself, gave away all of himself for us. I am the bread of life, Jesus says. It is my life that is taken. It is my life that is blessed. It is my life that is broken, and it is my life that I share for you. And I will give you this bread always. Whoever comes to me, regardless of their poverty or their riches, will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. For my bread is life and my cup is salvation, Jesus says. And there is nothing that any pandemic could ever do to take this away from us. So in some respects, this year, Thanksgiving celebrations will be very lonely for some. They will be frustrating for others. And they will be bereft for still others. Lonely for those who are choosing not to see their friends and family because of their concern of potentially spreading the disease. Frustrating for those who are cut off from loved ones in their support networks. And bereft for still others who will find that now they have an empty seat at their table. For the pandemic has stolen away someone that they have loved. Amongst all of these feelings of fears, anger, and loss, we are presented again with the question of faith. Who are we giving thanks to? What are we giving thanks for? And this is my answer for you this morning. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for the kindness and the generosity that we have in our community. Thanks be to God for all of the creative new ways of reaching out to others and showing our love. Thanks be to God that in this post-truth age, some things remain true. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these we know is love. Thanks be to God for the bread of life that each of us will receive here at Christ's table this morning. For as a mother cares for her children, so does our God love and care for each of us. For this reason, I hope that in your hearts, each of us will say, thanks be to God. I pray that all that I've shared with you this day may be pleasing in God's sight. Our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Response, let us affirm the faith of our baptism together as we say ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. As we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Together let us pray as one community of faith. When I say, Lord, in your love, I invite you to respond. Hear our prayer. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Gracious and most bountiful Father, we give you thanks for all of the blessings in our lives. We give you thanks for this community that we live in, for the rich abundance that we see here in the Blue Mountains. We give thanks that knowing in other places around the world there isn't the same abundance. You call us with a responsibility to share that about abundance and to care for others in their time of need. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, at a time where the church is changing, weak in some places, you've given us a strong and resourced parish. We pray for all of the leaders of this congregation here at St. George's Blue Mountains. We pray for those we are called to serve. We ask that you always keep our hearts open and our doors open to reach out into the community and do what a church is called to do. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you are present with those who are sick in their time of need. And so in this moment of silence, we bring before you those we know that are sick. We ask you to be near them, to grant them your strength and comfort. And if it is your will, O Lord, to restore them to wholeness of health. Let's remember now David and Margaret. Kent and Judy, Kent, Judy. Ruth and Howard, Ruth. Anne Marie, Betty Lou, Jan and Jeffrey, Jan. and all those that you know. <clears throat> Gracious God, be with them in their time of need. Lord, in your love. God of peace and love, we dedicate this Holy Eucharist to you in thanksgiving for the life of David Beard, a beloved member of this parish who died peacefully yesterday. May your light rest eternal, perpetual upon him, and may he grant him your peace. May David and all of the faithful departed rise in the resurrection of Christ. Lord, in your love, Amen. Heavenly Father, you know our needs before we even ask. We ask that you grant them as may be best for us and in your time. This we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners. He invites us to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful Lord, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all of your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. you can give a little nod to those who sit around, uh, but in this time you remain seated. And I would invite Donna, would you bring forward our offering with the gifts for today? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Source of all life, the heaven and the earth are yours that you have given us dominion over all things. Receive the symbols of your labor and love, which we offer to you this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As I said, the
table, uh, just a, a word about our process for Holy Eucharist. I invite you to please remain seated where you are. Please keep your mask on. And when it comes time for me to administer the, the bread, uh, I'm going to ask you to hold your left hand out. And I'm going to come to you and place the, the bread in your hand. Don't do anything with it. Hold on to it. And we will all eat it at the same time together. And I'll give you the indication of that. And again, please remain seated this time. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is your right to give our thanks and prayers. Blessed are you, o gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of light and life for all your creation. You made us in your own image and call us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, Jesus took a cup of wine. When he'd given thanks to you, O Lord, he gave it to his followers and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to your Son's command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in the sacrifice that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of our church, and the author of our salvation. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Now at this time, I'll ask if there are any who receive the gluten-free host, just to give me a little wave for a moment. Hold up your, hold up the, 
you the bread you have. And at this time, just with your other hand, you take the mask down. And Janet, you will give me an overture. Jesus, love of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, love of us, sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer, redeemer of the world, we give us your peace. Please join with me in standing. And while we can't quite sing this yet, let us from the very bottom of our hearts uh, celebrate with joy and thanksgiving the words to our glory to God. As we say, Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to please be seated for our closing hymn.
hearts and minds in the knowledge of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God, whose Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you, your loved ones and friends, wherever they may be, for this Thanksgiving and always. Amen. Our time of worship has come to its close, but our role in caring and serving this community continues. Go in peace, for love, and to serve the Lord. Thanks to God. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Please do remain seated as the ones escort you out, and all the best in your family celebrations. Have a great week. Thank you.